Christ, having risen from the dead, dies now no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to our morning Mass this morning. And our Mass this morning is offered for John Drummond. And the other Mass offered today by Father Julian will be offered for the repose of the soul of Father Robert Wright. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You shouldered the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You opened for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that we may experience at all times the fruit produced by the paschal observances. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Sailing from Troas, we made a straight run for Samothras, the next day for Neapolis, and from there for Philippi, a Roman colony and the principal city of that particular district of Macedonia. After a few days in this city, we went along the river outside the gates, as it was the Sabbath, and this was a customary place for prayer. We sat down and preached to the women who had come to the meeting. One of these women was called Lydia, a devout woman from the town of Theatira, who was in the purple dye trade. She listened to us, and the Lord opened her heart to accept what Paul was saying. After she and her household had been baptized, she sent us an invitation. If you really think me a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay with us, and she would take no refusal. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing a new song to the Lord. His praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in its maker. Let Zion's sons exult in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name with dancing, uh, make music with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the poor with salvation. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful rejoice in their glory, shout for joy and take their rest. Let the praise of God be on their lips. This honour is for all his faithful. The Lord takes delight in his people. Alleluia. It 
was ordained that the Christ should suffer and rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who issues from the Father, he will be my witness. And you too will be witnesses because you have been with me from the outset. I have told you all this so that your faith may not be shaken. They will expel you from the synagogues, and indeed the hour is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is doing a holy duty for God. They will do these things because they have never known either the Father or myself. But I have told you all of this, so that when the time for it comes, you may remember that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you really think me a true believer in the Lord, said Lydia, come and stay with us. And she would take no refusal. One of my first thoughts on reflecting on uh, today's readings was a rather irreverent one because it struck me that Lydia was a bit like uh, an early day Mrs Doyle from Father Ted, brooking no refusal over the offer of a cup of tea. You will, you will, you will. But there is, that said, a wonderful passion that comes through in that first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The passion and the commitment and the enthusiasm of somebody newly baptised, someone newly received into the church. And for those of us who have been born Catholic, raised Catholic, for those of us who have been Catholic for many years, for those who have been Christian for many years, we can lose a sense of that enthusiasm. We can lose a sense of that passion. And maybe one of the things through all of this isolation, through all of this being cut off from the way we usually do things, please God, will be that it will create for us a passion and a thirst. I suppose we can take for granted what is readily available. Take it or leave it. And we only miss something when it's gone. And maybe, just maybe, these days are teaching us something about what's important and what we thirst after, thirst after, after, and what we need. Please God, it will make us enthusiastic and passionate for that Sunday celebration of the Eucharist, that daily celebration of the Eucharist even. So that the Eucharist and Mass doesn't become an obligation, but is something that we are truly passionate for. There was another thing that struck me about that reading from the Acts of the Apostles as well. It says that after a few days in the city, we went along the river outside the gates as it was the Sabbath and there was a customary place for the prayer. So the early church didn't gather in buildings like this, didn't gather in neatly arranged, cosy buildings. They gathered outside where they could, how they could, when they could. They prayed outside of buildings and churches. And that's where we are today, having to pray not here, but outside in other places, maybe strange places. 
but the invitation is to make wherever we are holy. The invitation is to make wherever we are a place of prayer because the Spirit lives in you and me wherever we are. So we're being called, I think, to identify with the life of those first Christians, to make the best out of difficult situations and circumstances, and to relive and re-engage and revive that passion for all that we hold dear. So in a moment of silence, let us bring before the Lord our prayers for the church and for the world, for the sick and the suffering, for those who care for them, for the faithful departed. Trusting in her intercession, we call on Mary as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we set before you, in faith and in hope, and in the name of your Son, Jesus, who reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfilment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, 
and the Lamb of Sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, oh. holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Pope Saint John Paul II, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us, Grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. And now uniting ourselves to this act of communion, we pray at home our prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. What has passed our lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart, that what has been given to us in time may be our healing. Jesus stood in the midst of his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Alleluia. 
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So during the Eucharistic prayer, you may have noted that we prayed for Pope St. John Paul II. It would have been his 100th birthday today. So we call on Pope St. John Paul to pray for us, to pray for the church. And uh, calling on his prayers, we trust always in the loving mercy of our Heavenly Father. Have a pleasant day. And uh, Mass again tomorrow, 10 o'clock, technology permitting. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.